Hey everybody, let's zoom out here so you can see the paper. We're going to start the uh, assignment out of the book for uh, CPM Chapter 6, uh, Lesson 1.4. So Chapter 6, 6.1.4 out of the CPM book. Uh, if you like page numbers and you're working out of the physical book, not the e-book, it's, it starts on page 280, right? The section... Uh, for 6.1.4 starts on page 276. You can see that there, right? But the actual homework assignment that we have, remember the it's always going to be the, the review and preview, almost always. Um, that starts on page 280. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at it and get started, and hopefully I can get you started and give you enough hints that you can finish on your own. You can see in that first problem I copied down. Uh, uh, the grid that they had, right? The little graph, its first quadrant. Remember how those quadrants work, right? With the with the the math, they have uh, four quadrants. But if all the numbers are positive on the x-axis and y-axis, then this is called the first quadrant. And they they show that quadrant with Roman numerals. Remember one, two, three, and four. This is quadrant one. Okay, so all we're supposed to do is take those points and identify where does B live, right? B is easy because it's right on one of the lines, the line for 3 and a line for 12. And you just have to remember, and you should probably write this on your paper if you don't remember, two things, over and up, right? And above that, do X comma Y. The X value happens first. What does that mean? This is the X axis. This is the Y axis. X is horizontal, Y is vertical. You go over first and up second. So if I was going to be doing this point right here, right, I would go over 12, up 3. It'd be 12, 3, not 3, 12. Where's 3, 12? It's over 3 and up. Oh, I just gave away answer B. Right. So you're going to go you're going to go identify and it gets a little tricky with C and D because C and D are not right on the lines for nine or 12. It's in between. It's not right on the lines for, or six or nine. It's in between. And you have to use your best estimate to tell me where it is. Right. Because there were count by threes here, but there's a one and a two in between. All right, there's a four and a five in between three and six. All right, all right, so you're going to try that. Next question is, <clears throat> school had a bake sale, and they sold a bunch of pies, and each pie was cut into sixths. Now, if you do your pie better than I did, all the pieces are the same size. I don't know about you, but I'm looking at these pieces, and I think I want piece number one, and you can have piece number three, all right? Uh, anyway, so if they sold all of the pies all 11 right and each piece of pie each slice sold for a dollar how much money would they have made well that's one pie there one two three four five six another pie is going to have six another and they had 11 pies what are you going to do on that one i think you know you're going to take 11 pies and each pie had how many pieces all right, and since they were really nice to us and said each piece is a, a dollar, we have to multiply our answer to this by a dollar, right, to show how much money you made. I think you can figure that out, okay? The other math that they're doing there is they're saying how many one-sixths are in 11, okay? And uh, we're learning how to divide fractions, right? Because 11 can be a fraction. Just put a one under it. Okay, that's what you're doing. Okay, don't get confused by the way I wrote 6-53. It says, find the area and perimeter of a rectangle that is 14.5 meters by 5.8. If you were in construction, if you want to say that rectangle is this long by this, you would write it like this, right? Uh, so don't be confused and think you're going to multiply those two for both of the answers here you will actually multiply for one of the answers, right? So if 
it's 14.5 here and 5.8 there. You should, you should draw a picture. Whenever you're doing a word problem, if you can draw a picture, do it. Okay. It'll make it easier to solve almost every single time. Okay. And draw a picture. I'm not drawing a, a you know, picture of Albert Einstein here. I'm drawing a picture of a rectangle. That's pretty easy. Don't say, oh, I'm not good at drawing. Yeah, it's a rectangle. Draw it, label it. It's part of showing your work. It'll make things easier. And remember, the perimeter is the distance around. So I got this plus this, but did I go all the way around? No, I got this plus this plus another 14.5 and another 5.8. Now the area, the area of a parallelogram is called the base times the height. And a rectangle is a special parallelogram where the height is one of the sides. So you will be multiplying those two to get the area. And remember, your units for area is going to be square meters. Your units for perimeter is just meters. Okay, that's enough of a hit on that one. You can do that. And on number uh, 654, we're just doing prime factorization. We've been doing those in the warm-up for a while, right? Remember how to do that. You say, what two numbers multiply together equal 30? You could say 10 times 3. What two numbers multiply together equal 10? You can say 5 times 2. And on 5, the only numbers that multiply together equal 5 are 5 and 1. Well, if I did 5 and 1, you would do 5 and 1 for the next one, and you would never finish. So always remember, when you get to a number, and the only number goes into it is 1 in itself, you circle it because it's a special number. What kind of number is it if the only number goes into it is 1 in itself? Hint, hint, hint. Okay, when you get done, you're supposed to take those numbers and put them in order. And technically, that's the prime factorization. You put them in order to make a multiplication problem. All those are prime. So I'm going to say 2 times 3 times 5 is the prime factorization of 30. And <clears throat> put them in order. It, it still equals 5 times 2 times 3. But they want them in order. And there's a couple different reasons for that. Sometimes you will end up rewriting them with exponents and if you put them in order all those numbers that go together are together and it's easy to make that exponent okay you're going to try it with these okay and i'm going to give you a hint one of these numbers is prime so you're going to make a what i call a factor seed instead of a factor tree all right let's go on to the next one six dash five five we haven't had a pattern problem in, in a while so <clears throat> we're starting with this one dot and then figure two has another dot above it and two to the right. I'm sorry, I sort of made a mistake. So it's supposed to be one more tall and two more. So there's three on the bottom now. Okay. And then another, what changed between here and here? I added another on the top and two more to the right. Okay. Now, if you want to figure out how many dots are in each figure, okay, because that is going to be one of the questions later, you could say in figure one, I had one dot. In figure two, I had one, two, three, four dots. In figure three, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. And in figure four, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dots. Okay. Um, and now you're going to try to figure out <clears throat> what does figure five look like? How many dots tall will it be? Hint. Okay. Figure four is four tall. Figure three is three tall, right? And how many dots wide will it be? Okay. Draw that. And I think that's enough of a hint for you. It looks like it's getting one dot taller and two dots wider each time. Okay, so it's a total of how much bigger does it get? One to four, that's three more. Four to seven, that's three more. Okay, so the, the last two questions, they want you to describe, after you draw these two figures, describe figure 20, and then tell me how many dots would go be in here in figure 20. Now, a cool thing to do is check out the warm-up from Friday. We did a bunch of in and outs. Which is what this is like that. And see if you can figure out what comes out, what would come out, how many dots would be in figure X. Okay. That is a cool thing to figure out. 
okay, and it'll help you with anything. The next day, what, what, what if there's a figure of 100, how many dots in that? You'll just, boom, okay? All right, that's the difference between a pattern and a function. On to 6-56, this is something you're good at because we've done a bunch of graffiti, so you're going to go plot these dots, and again, over and up, right, over and up, okay? The X goes first, the Y second. Now, when I talk about quadrants, if this line continued this way and this line continued this way, then I would have like a negative one here, negative two, negative one going down, right? And then you'd see I have an area here, area here, area here, area. Those are the quadrants. Okay, when everything's positive, we talk about quadrant one. That's what we do most of our stuff in sixth grade. Uh, although we do have some graffitis and negatives now, right? Okay, so you'll you'll get some practice with those too. Okay, so you're going to plot all those dots and then tell me the area and the perimeter of all those. Okay, I'm anxious to see what what shape that ends up being. Okay, but I think you can do that. <clears throat> Come back tomorrow and you can check your answer to mine. 657, Miss Perez giving her class a pizza party and every student completed a school-wide reading challenge. If an extra large pizza costs $15 and serves eight people, how much should she expect to pay for pizzas that's going to cover all 28 of her students, right? So how many pieces? There's eight. Eights are easy, right? So I got to figure out how many pizzas I need to buy first and how many pizzas to feed 28 students if there's eight pieces in each pizza, right? Well, eight's not enough. Two pizzas would be how many? 16 pieces. Not enough. Three pizzas would be 16 plus eight, 24. Mm, not enough. I got to buy that fourth pizza. I might have some left over. Not with my son around now, right? Uh, but hey, I'm going to have to buy four. Okay, so how much money would that cost? You do the math on that. Show your work. Uh, these uh, uh, generic rectangles, if this is 20 and this is six, what goes here? Six times 20. And if this is 20 and this, we don't know what it is, but I know when I multiply it, I get 1,600. What's going to go here? Well, the hint on that is I say two times what is 16? Eight. So that's going to start with an eight. But eight times 20 is 16 with one zero. I want two zeros. Boom. Okay. That's how you're going to solve that. I'm going to let you try that one. Okay. I'll help you on this one. 30 times what equals 2,700? Well, I know three times nine. Okay, but that's only one zero. Get another zero, 90. <clears throat> okay, and I go five times what is 45? Hopefully, you know that's a nine. And then nine times what is 3,600? You can figure out what that is. Okay, I'm going to let you finish that. <clears throat> Remember on a uh, portions web, Changing a percent to a decimal, just move it two spots this way. All right, that'll get you the decimal. All right, decimal. <clears throat> I don't want to put a zero in front of it because that's more than 100%. This can be more than one. And then a fraction, you, you can write 145 over 100 and then simplify it. <clears throat> or that's one and 45 hundredths. And then simplify it. Okay, then in the middle you write it with words. Looks like I skipped over one, or did I? <clears throat> six dash. Oh, yeah, six dash five nine. Oh, this is a whole bunch of problems, right? In each of the problem below, assume that people divide the food evenly and write your answer as the division problem in fraction form. So two people. Drink one soda. How much does each person get? That's one soda divided by two people. One half. Each person gets one half. On B, two people share three hamburgers. Okay. So three hamburgers and two people. Each person gets one and one half or three halves of a hamburger. Okay. I'm going to have you... Go ahead and finish C, D, E, and F, right? And that's how I did it, right? Two people shared one soda. The one, the thing that you're sharing goes on top. The number of people goes on the bottom. 
Two people shared three hamburgers. Okay, I'm sharing the three hamburgers. That goes on top. The number of people they're sharing with goes on the bottom. Okay, that's your hint. All right, good luck, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow for all the answers.